Well, good day, everyone. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about a little lens that Pergear sent me. Um, and I'm always looking for cheap options for you guys that don't want to spend too much money on lenses and things like that. So I do like to show occasionally some really good cheap options. And this is a really good little lens. I mean, there are compromises, but you'd expect that for the price of, you know, $99 US. Uh, but this is an APS-C lens uh, and it's tiny, but this is a 35mm f1.2. Uh, and it's really small, uh, really small in fact. Now it is designed for APS-C, but you can also use it on your full frame cameras as long as you put it into super 35 mil mode. But let me just show you the little size of this. Well, you can see it roughly from this, how small this is. There is a bit, a little bit of weight to it though, because it's full metal. Uh, but let me put it on say an A9. I can't put it on the A6400 because I'm using that uh, to record at the moment. So this is the lens on say an A9. This gives you an idea about how small uh, that this little lens is. I mean, it's so much fun to play with. I just haven't had enough time yet to play with it with video, but I've done uh, you know quite a bit of photography that I can show you today because uh, I wanted to concentrate on that. Um, but it, it works beautifully. I mean, the aperture ring has a nice bit of give to it, so it's really nice when you uh, move it around. Uh, the focus ring is is beautiful. I mean, to get to nail focus with this uh, is really nice and really easy. Like, it's very easy to repeat it and things like that because they're not fly-by-wire. It is fully manual, though, so there's no auto AF uh, with this. But using focus peaking and also the magnified viewfinder, uh, I found that it was perfect to use. I had no issue uh, with it at all. So let me just show you, before I show you some images, let me just show you about the lens itself. So this is the lens and it's from Per Gear. It's the 35 millimeter F1.2 um, fixed focus lens. Now you can buy it in different mounts too, like there's Canon EOS M, uh, there's also the Nikon Z mount, Fuji mount, and also Sony E mount. Uh, you can see at the moment they're $99. I'll stick the link for this down below. Uh, they may send me some other links uh, as well. Um, I'll just show you the lens. You can sort of see that that's your aperture ring down here. This is your focus ring. Again, this is just another look uh, at how it all works. It goes from um, f2, f1.0 to f22. I'll discuss the specs uh, in a minute. I'm just giving you uh, some different looks of how this is. Um, so let me scroll down. I'll just tell you a little bit about the lens. So the specifications is that it's an f1.2 35 millimeter. Now that's an APS-C lens, so you must remember that. Uh, if you want to put it on full frame, well then you'd have to multiply it by 1.5. So it's probably around about a 50. Um, lens construction is six elements in five groups. The focal length is 35 millimeter on APS-C. Um, maximum aperture is 1.2 and the minimum aperture is F22. Number of blades is 10 uh, and the focus range is 25 centimeters uh, to infinity. Uh, the external dimensions are 48 by 53 millimetres and the weight, including the cap, is 210 grams and the filter size is uh, 43 millimetre. So what I'll do now is I'll show you some of the images so you can have a look at what uh, the images are like. So I thought I'd start here. You can see me actually using this with the A6400 uh, here. Um, and like I said, it is uh, all manual focus. This was shot from an A7 III uh, with a Tamron lens actually on it. Uh, but I wanted, to, I asked Kerry to do one of me uh, taking one behind the scenes. And the shot that I grabbed was actually this one uh, here. So you can see this is the image that I, I grabbed. And like I said, look, it's not the sharpest lens, but there's some interesting things about this. If you're after more of the, like a vintage type look, uh, something a little bit different that's not too expensive to give you a 1.2 lens, uh, you can get some really nice results. I actually focused on that leaf uh, right here. So you can see if I enlarge it, it's quite sharp in the center, um, but it does fall off fairly quickly on the outside of the lens. But you would expect that for a lens that's only $99, but it could give you some really interesting effects uh, in video too. Like I said, I'll have to try it uh, with some video as well uh, soon just to see how it goes. Colors are very, very nice uh, as well. This was another shot that I took of the waterfall that was just behind that. Um, so the waterfall was directly behind where uh, Kerry was just shot me from so uh, that's uh, from there uh, these were all mostly shot at 1.2 because I did want to test it out uh, at 1.2 uh, another one here 
um, is just some tree fern. So you can sort of see, if you look at these, the sharpness, like I said, in the centre is really quite sharp, uh, which is really all you need, really. And, and I'm, I'm happy as long as the lens is sharp. In fact, I've moved away from a lot of that sharpness anyway, and I'm using now uh, some little diffusers that I put on front of the lens anyway, uh, some of the Tiffon ones, which are really nice, and Freewell have just sent me one as well. Um, so also, this is another one where it's showing close up, and it's also showing how you can blur the background away as well uh, from this leaf that you can see I've focused directly onto the fern here. Uh, and things really get out of focus very, very quickly if you're shooting at 1.2. Uh, as you can see, this is in focus, but this is out of focus uh, as well. Um, this was one I wanted to shoot some landscape just to sort of see what it was like. And again, I've sort of focused, I think, on these houses in this area here. Um, let that build up so you can see that that's quite sharp if you're looking at the houses uh, on that area through there it was a very gray and dull day you can also see with the um, little surfer there or the, the board rider that that's really sharp as well uh, in that area as well this was another one that i wanted to try landscape uh, again i focused on the buildings in the background so don't ignore the foreground and everything like that i just wanted to test how it was in the background uh, and you can see that it's quite sharp uh, through the background through here as well and the Catholic Church. Uh, so it really is quite sharp. Whatever you'd like to focus on as the main part of the lens uh, is really quite good. Fall off is beautiful. Uh, and remember that's subjective as well. So you do have to think about how you like the bokeh and everything as well. Uh, but this was one where I just wanted to say grab some flowers and just to see how it was at 1.2 uh, and grab the fall off. Uh, this was another one where I wanted to grab the flowers through here as well, uh, just to see how the fall off was there uh, too. You can see how it's just blown the background away completely and it gives you an idea about how close you can get um, to the flowers, which is almost getting in macro territory. Uh, this was another one that I wanted to focus. Now, I focused directly in the middle through here. Um, and you can see once this builds up, that's quite sharp, the one I focused on. But anything just outside of that is blown away because it is shooting at 1.2. Um, and you can see it gives you a lovely, uh, lovely rendering. I wanted to try some too, uh, a little bit up in, in uh, depth of field. This was a shot at 5.6, uh, just to see how that looked. And again, it's, it's uh, quite nice and sharp uh, in the center. You can see all the flowers and everything are all nice and sharp where I focus through here uh, and the middle through here uh, is quite nice as well. Uh, this was another one that was shot at 5.6. I wanted to see how it sort of held the detail in the bricks uh, and the door and things like that. Like you can see every little scratch uh, and everything that's going on through uh, the door there as well. So the sharp, these have had no sharpening added to them at all. Uh, so they're basically uh, straight out of camera. Uh, this was another one that I wanted to see how the close up focusing is. Uh, and I focused on this flower over here. Uh, and you can see once that builds up that that's really quite, well, I mean, it's, it's sharp, sharp enough anyway. But you can see the second it goes away, these are out of sharpness because of how much you're shooting if you're shooting at f1.2, how quickly that background uh, sort of fades away. Uh, this is another one just to show the background blur that you can get if you're shooting at 1.2. Uh, it really does blow the background away beautifully. Um, uh, and also the colours as well. I mean, the colours are really quite beautiful that are coming out of this lens. They're nice, vibrant, um, and, and really nice. Uh, again, this is just taking some of some flowers. Uh, again, I just wanted to focus on the flower in front here and then just sort of see uh, how the background would drop out uh, there as well. Uh, another one through here as well. I wanted to get a little bit closer. You can see the background has just been completely blown away, so there's nothing there at all. Uh, the flower in front is uh, reasonably sharp. This is one from top down, so I wanted to see if I could sort of get the flowers inside through here, uh, and that's that one. And again, you can see how much it's blurred the background away. Uh, this was another one I just wanted to test uh, clipping onto these flowers at the front here and seeing what it did to the background, the trees in the background. And you can see that it has blown totally away, uh, which was really nice. And then to finish up, a couple of photos here were just shot at uh, around 5.6. I think I can't remember. I think it was about 5.6. Uh, and, you know, you can sort of see all the detail in the um, 
wheelbarrow. And also, uh, if you're looking at this one as well, that was also shot at 5.6 uh, as well. So I always like to show real images rather than having images that, you know, just talk about how it went. I would prefer to show you what it's like because, as I said, it's not the sharpest lens you'll ever use and no way is it uh, that sharp. But it gives an interesting look. It's nice and colourful. Uh, also, if you want a cheap lens that can shoot at 1.2, um, it's really quite good. And like I said, I'd like to try it with uh, video just to sort of see what type of vintage feel it will give in that regard as well. So I may do that somewhere down the track when I get a little bit of time. But overall, look, I think it's great. The build quality is fantastic. Uh, for $100 US, really, you can't go wrong. Uh, if you're after a really fast lens, and 35 millimeter is a great um, focal length on APS-C or even full frame, uh, I think you really can't go wrong with a lens like this to have a play around for the price uh, and at least if you were shooting in low light uh, it gives you that ability to open up to 1.2 yes it's not sharp on the edges I don't really care about that that much to be honest uh, I'm quite happy with how the images look but you have to understand that it is manual focus uh, apart from that guys if you have any questions leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible uh, thank you so much per gear for sending me this lens uh, and I'll see you all in the next video bye for now